Hello, Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 from SalesforceMentor.com with another video using flows. In this video, we are going to be creating a custom auto number field. So if you're a little bit knowledgeable about auto number fields, you know that they're created for every record, regardless of uh, any criteria that you may have. In this video, we are going to be adding some criteria to that auto number value. So for example, anytime the lead source is phone or web, we're going to have an auto number value in there. For this example, we're gonna be using some custom settings and a really cool flow that I have created here. I'm gonna be walking through all the steps to get that done, so stick around for that. If you're a fan of my channel, make sure to like and subscribe for more Salesforce content. We have tutorials like this and many other types of videos like advice and interviews. Big shout out to Sarah P, who is my most recent patron. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Make sure to stick around to the end where I'll go over some additional tips on how to learn flows even more. Now let's jump into this. A lot of us are very familiar with this Create a Round Robin lead assignment a document that has been out for a good amount of time. And what this walks us through is how to do a round robin lead assignment using some of the standard processes that we have at our arsenal. So this means we are using an auto numbering field, we are using formulas in the modulus function, and we are using the out of the box lead assignment, which is really great if you have one lead assignment process that you want to do and the auto numbering that we're using to kind of kick off this entire process does not have any specific requirements or restrictions for that specific record. If you haven't already, make sure to go through this document, link down below, understand everything that's going on, especially with the modulus function. There's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, go through the assignment rules and just check this out. This is really powerful stuff if you've never used it before. Let's set the stage for our object a little bit here. We are working on the lead, running through pretty much the exact scenario that we had before, except there's a little bit of a twist in that we need specific criteria for the auto numbering fields that we are using. When we go to create a record, we don't want that auto numbering and round robin field to be generated every time. Going in here to create a lead, let's show what it looks like originally, adding in some test data here for test company. And we can see over to the left that lead number is set to 75. It's an auto numbering field and it just keeps counting up. The round robin is set to two because of the modulus function and the number of users that I have. This is great when we know every time a lead comes in, it's going to go to our round robin pool, but what if we want to use a custom round robin pool, one based on specific criteria? In this instance, the lead number will get generated every time, but we only want this round robin to go off when maybe the lead source is selected to a specific one of uh, these options here. If we do this in the standard sense by using the auto number, it's just gonna keep generating every time. And we don't actually want that. We want only once the lead source is set to web, an auto number is generated. Since we have this custom auto numbering and we don't want this generated every time, what we'll need to do is use some additional fields, which I've already created here, metadata lead number and metadata round robin. Those are going to be our custom fields that are only based on the specific criteria and only increment based on, for our example, the web and the phone inquiry, we could do this for uh, additional criteria and other fields. Jumping into the lead objects for the custom fields that we actually need to get this done, I have one here for the metadata lead number, which is gonna be the auto number that keeps going up. And we have another one here for metadata round robin. This is using the same modulus function that we've seen before. And also we have three different users. So we're setting that to three. 
The other thing that we'll need is some sort of container or number that lives outside of the lead object that we can always call upon to continue to increment. In this situation, we're going to be creating a custom setting. This is because we can programmatically update custom settings using automation like flows and process builders this is different from custom metadata types because we can't increment and save to custom metadata types inside of flows. At least for right now, we are on winter 21. This may change in the future. So let's go ahead and create a really quick custom setting that we can use to hold the auto number that's going to keep increasing. For our example, let's go ahead and create two number fields on that custom setting. These two number fields are gonna represent the different auto number that's going up for the criteria that we have. So if you remember, we wanna use the lead source, one for phone and one for web. This will allow us to have individual auto numbers for each of those, which in turn gives us our own way of doing lead assignment. Now that we have those two fields created for those specific auto numbers on the lead, let's go to manage and create the auto number record. I'm just gonna drop in some starting values here so we kinda know the difference Phone can start at one and web can start at uh, 2,550. Just for our testing, we'll be able to see the difference between the auto number fields really easily. Now let's jump into the thing that kind of connects all of this together, which is a flow that we are going to create. We'll jump into the flow builder. We want this flow to trigger automatically, so we could use a record trigger flow or an auto launching flow. In a lot of my videos, I've used auto launching flow and record trigger flows are the nucleate on the block, so I wanna make sure that everybody's familiar with that. So let's go ahead and use the record trigger flow. We're gonna use the new auto layout feature, which is kinda snazzy, and we'll get to see how that works a little bit here. Let's start by setting up our trigger criteria anytime our record is created or updated, and this will be an after save. Depending on how you want your auto number criteria to be, you could change any of this to whatever suits your needs. Let's find our object here, which will be the lead, and set some conditions that sort of make sense for our use case because we know we only want this to fire off if the lead has a lead source, so we can easily just add in a quick condition for the lead source, checking if it's blank or not, so that we can throw out any records and the system isn't processing things that it doesn't need to, which is really great practice for keeping your system fast and efficient as you continue to add different processes in. Let's move on to the next step. And what we currently know is the lead from the record that was updated, but we don't know the last number in the auto number sequence that we have. We are using the custom setting to hold all of our auto numbers. So once we're in the flow, we need to get the custom setting so that we know the value in our auto number. Selecting the auto number custom object, we're going to have no criteria because we only have one custom setting for this auto number. So this is really great. We don't need to do any other additional selections. Now let's add in our next element, which is a decision. We're going to need to decide which auto number value we're going to be incrementing. Because if you remember, we have one auto number for the lead source of web, and then we have one auto number for the lead source of phone. Looking through this decision element, let's check the lead source for the value we are looking for. 
In our first case, we're looking for phone inquiry. For the second case, we want to make sure that the lead source is web. Of course, you could add additional criteria in here to make sure that there's no values in the uh, metadata field already. But customize this process to meet your business needs. Next, we are on to the decision nodes. So in here, for the first one on the phone, let's go ahead and do an assignment. This is where the auto numbering will actually happen inside of the custom setting. We're going to add one to whatever the last auto number value was. This is effectively incrementing it in the auto number cycle. This is the magic of everything that is happening here and it's kind of simple when you boil it down. We're taking the lead source phone and adding one to it. From there all we need to do is assign the value back to the lead because we've now incremented our auto number we can assign the new value into our lead and we have the incrementation that we'll need for our round robin. One quick note is to make sure that we're using the custom setting auto number for the phone lead source and setting that back into the lead source metadata field on the lead. So now we are going to do the same exact thing for the uh, web lead source type. This is because it's either or. If you only had one auto number field, then yeah, you could just do it for that specific one. But in this case, I wanna show you the differences between using uh, two different criteria, one for the lead source of web and one for lead source of phone. Now that we have everything lined up, one for the path of phone, one for the path of web, and just a default outcome, uh, we shouldn't really be hitting that. Uh, next, we'll need to update all of the values that we have been manipulating through here. So the first new element will be an update record, and this will be updating the lead that we have been working with our overall record in here. So that's pretty simple. And then the next update we'll need to do is for the custom metadata type, which we're going to update this because every time we make a change or increment it, that's what's holding the value that continues to increase that counter and have that outside force. We'll go in, select our auto number custom settings. This is where it differentiates between custom metadata types and custom settings. Custom metadata types we can pull value from, but we cannot update the values like we can do with a custom setting. So here's our full flow in all of its glory. It'll go down, make a decision on the lead source. If it's phone, it'll go down one path. If it's web, it'll go down the other path. Do the auto updating for each of those specific auto number generated values. And that's the key. It's specific to that criteria. We have an auto number. It's not just a global one for any lead that is created. We're having this for our specific conditions that we have in here. So a little bit of cleanup. Let's give our flow a name and start to see how all this is going to work. Save this and now let's activate it and head back over into our record to see how this is working. I'm going to create a brand new lead here so that we can see some of the differences from when we start from scratch. Throw in some dummy data in here. We can see that the metadata number is blank and we are selecting a lead source of web or one of the values that should trigger on this. And now when we're looking at our metadata lead number, we can see that it's 2,552, which is the number that we were expecting as we went through this. If I quickly switch this to phone inquiry, we can see that the metadata is also being incremented there uh, for that number as well. And right now I have this set up for any change as long as this record has a lead source so I can continue to change it and see this number increase um, as I go along. 
Let's jump into our lead assignments real quick just to show you how uh, all of this kind of ties together when we look back to the original documentation that we have. We have these three different users set up in the different assignment rules and that is based on the metadata round robin field which uses that modulus function. If you had a separate set of users that needed to be assigned through that lead assignment, all you would need to do is continue to add in more lead assignment selections. Jumping back, let's take a look at our custom setting just to see uh, the end result of our numbers always increasing. This is the global setting that holds all of our auto number values and we can see that they're increasing there. One quick update that I would make to the flow is changing this so that it only triggers when the, the criteria is actually met. So that means that a change is done on the lead source. So it's, it's going from null to some other value. For your process, you may want to do this on, on create or uh, some other criteria that you have. This is really just an example to show you all, hey, this is something that you can do. You don't just have to stick with the standard auto numbering that Salesforce has. You can use your own values and your own criteria however you want to do it. Thank you all so much for watching this flow tutorial. I really appreciate all the love and support. Comment down below on if you have any additional ways of doing custom auto numbering or if you've used some sort of process like this to have your own criteria when doing auto numbering. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. There's also links to my personal tutorials on flows, so the ultimate guide to flows, so check that out. If this content is helpful for you, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos that I'm releasing. Big shout out to all my Patreons. Thank you all so much for supporting me. Check out my Patreon account where you can get exclusive access to myself and Salesforce Mentor. I'm Walters954 and remember, I believe in you.